Hello people, and welcome back to another episode of City Skylines Modular Builds. Hope you're all having a wonderful day. Today, we're going to have a look at the power and effect that specific zoning and asset selection can have within our cities, and also take a look at which assets work best with this technique, and essentially how this technique actually leads towards generating what is a brand new unique building. It's uh, It looks like an asset that we've never seen before, but not too much talking from me today uh, for a change. We are just going to have a look at what assets work nicely in these repeated patterns and how we get them in. So let's get started, shall we? So we will first start with low density residential. Now there's not too many assets within this pool altogether and the only ones that really work within repeated patterns are one by ones and one by twos under a green city's specialized area with these self-sufficient buildings specialization applied to the district so they come through as green cities housing. Now there are really quite few assets within this pool and zoning them out in kind of alternate one by one spaces like this. You kind of see how they very nearly merge together. Okay, and then once your pattern is filled in, it's a case of just alternating it the other side. So you can see when we're looking at the one by two measurements, there are a few different assets within this pool, but the vast majority of the time it's going to be the same one. So once you have your pattern filled in, you can then just come in and repeat them this side. If you do get this happening where you get two one by ones spawning and you want to force it into a one by two, then you just delete the side road, delete these two, and then it will force it to spawn in as a one by two. Once this comes in, you can then draw the road in again. So if you find you're having that issue, it can be avoided like that. We also have a similar situation over here as well. So just delete them. So you can see how the, the specific zoning and the asset placement um, really contributes to how the repeatable pattern looks. So here we have an example of a 1x2 low density residential repeated pattern. Again, you can be very choosy and wait for all of these same assets to come in. You can mix and match them, but the point of the specific zoning is to get in kind of a... No, it's almost like a new unique building, isn't it? So we can see here, here's the 1x2 the uh, repeated in now. You can see the assets, they're very nearly flush with each other. But to be honest, there's just not that many repeatable patterns in low density residential, which kind of makes sense for what it is. But you can achieve some fairly nice designs with the green city stuff. And so I'll get this set up with all of this same asset, and then we can kind of see what we think of our repeated uh, low density residential patterns. Okay, so now move on to high density residential uh, with no specific zoning. And again, your 4x4 four four, uh, repeated zonings here are going to be uh, some of your best friends. Now, as we're moving into high density residential, um, a lot of these repeated assets that work nicely together, they don't really come in until levels 2 and 3, and sometimes above that. So, so it can be a really obnoxious process for those without plot the growables and find it in order to get in these assets that you want to fit. Of course, if you're waiting until they level up, this process will take you even longer. So again, just find it and put the global so PC players makes this a lot easier. But you can just kind of see how long, you know, it takes to come in for you to find an asset that you want to be uh, repeatable, you know, once you do have it in. It's just a case of waiting for the next one to come through. Um, what I would advise whilst you're doing this is just go ahead and do something different, you know. Um, go ahead and do some detailing, carry on expanding your road network, place down some services. So let's we'll see what we've got in um, and then let's throw up yeah, a little montage of assets that work nicely in repeated patterns from the high density pool. And then we'll see uh, what they kind of look like once they're together.
we'll now move into the realm of Green City's uh, high density residential. And again, there's some really nice shapes we can do here. One of my favorites is a one by two uh, of high density residential within a self sufficient building uh, specialized district. And then, really, uh, you know, again, it's just a, a waiting game if you're without pop the growables and find it. Uh, to wait for these assets to come in. Um, but within the Green Cities pool, it's mainly these assets here and these little kind of one by two file cabinet looking buildings. Um, <laughs> I think that's the best way to uh, to describe them. Again, we can see where the zoning doesn't play ball with us. So it's a case of shattering this road so it forces it to spawn as a one by two from this direction. Uh, you know, you will come into those problems as you're kind of specifically zoning these up. So that's how you fix it. But you know, you just wait for these to come in, and uh, there's a variety of patterns with Green City's High Density Residential and um, that work really nicely. In repeated patterns, you can see organically, they don't take that long to come in. There's one mismatch here, so let's take this one out. And then there's a mismatch one on the end here as well. Hopefully this one grows in first time. Yes, there we go. So you know, you can kind of see the effect you get now. It kind of looks like one continuous block of flats as opposed to you know, 10 separate individual residential assets. Um, so yeah, some nice green cities patterns. Um, let's take a look at the, the zonings and then uh, how they look when they're kind of mashed together like this. Okay, so now let's have a look at some 1x4 uh, low density commercial assets. We're going to start with Green Cities. Um, again, because there's a nice um, asset that spawns in here. Uh, that looks like a farmer's market. And like, we'll just see how long it takes to come in uh, organically. Here's one of them already. So the name of the asset itself is actually the eco market. So one of the things you can actually do here is run vanilla dirt path within the spaces you don't zone. And then it's just a case of deleting the assets that come in that don't match the farmer's market vibe. And um, so I've used this in a ton of places around my cities now. It's definitely one of my favorite designs. And um, so this is just one by four uh, green cities commercial zoning. See, there's another one here. Had a little whole food marketplace. <laughs> one of them burns down. But, you know, just a case of deleting the ones that you don't want. And um, of course, you don't have to do at uh, this vanilla pathway in between. And you can continue to zone it. And then get some nice uh, 1x4 back-to-back uh, -back patterns. Uh, using this Green Cities technique uh, to generate some farmer's market designs. Either way, a little example of some uh, repeated commercial designs. Um, so let's have a look at all the other uh, low-density commercial assets that work nicely uh, when repeated next to each other.
But now we'll have a look at Office Zoning, again, a very similar concept to things that we've run before. And there's not nearly as many assets within the Office Pool as, say, something compared like uh, the High Density Residential or High Density Commercial. Uh, there's a lot of assets in that pool. And there we go. <laughs> Here is some naturally organic repeated spice. So some zonings is easier to do than others. Uh, and funny enough, this one right here, the Solutions Incorporated, and this one works really nicely in a repeated pattern. And absolute look of the YouTuber <laughs> to get four of them in straight away like that, okay? But, you know, prime example right here of how um, specific repeated zoning can lead to us developing what is essentially like a new unique building, right? This will look really nice in your skyline. It's just not one block of office zoning, it's four... Four separate actual offices, but it looks like one building. And when you run with this design and idea across your entire city, um, you end up with a much more customised, chiselled out, to your liking skyline, <laughs> I suppose is the take home point. So let's have a look at some of the repeatable office assets. And um, these ones right here, the level one, the 4x4, four four, they work perfectly. <laughs> All right. Uh, really nice one, this one. Uh, but either way, let's dive into the office and see what we think of them, shall we? And then last but certainly not least, we will take a look at some repeated IT cluster spice. So again, there's some really nice assets within this pool uh, that work tremendously well when they're kind of backed onto each other. So one of my favourites is a, uh, a 1 by 3 zoning. So that's just one tile by 3 deep. And there's very few assets within this pool. This is the one we're after here. Again, I think I've used this all the time. You guys know what's coming. <laughs> uh, likewise with these ones next door as well. And these also work quite nicely. But you want to kind of get rid of these ones in between. There we go. Fill in the next one there. Historical that one. Not that they level up anyway, but just so they don't abandon. And then we'll just kind of hang around and wait for this next one to come in. And then once we do get it in, you can kind of see now how it's appeared here, right? It almost it extends the asset again. It makes it look like a brand new unique building. And uh, you can even mix and match. Why not, you know? If you want to mix and match and have that little indentation within the texture, it's a... Uh, that's kind of depth and layer from the street level as well. So that's something to bear in mind. Uh, but either way, you know, the asset looking to repeat here is all of these. And we can also fill in the ones adjacent and next door now as well. And then just wait for them uh, to level up. We'll hopefully get one coming through here, which completes the flush pattern for us. There you go. There is kind of a, a spice sample, if you like, right? And you can imagine if you run this for a couple of blocks. I, I would say as a take-home point, um, if you do start to repeat patterns all over the place and very close to each other, um, it does start to become quite noticeable. So if that's something that bothers you, then it might be something you want to think about if you're going to be doing this heavily repeated zoning. So, you know, these, these IT cluster ones, they're really easy to get in. And, and then you can just kind of get a... An example of it from down here, right? Nice little design, running these little one by three ones together. But either way, let's have a look at all the IT cluster repeated designs, and then uh, we'll see what we think at the end.
And if you do feel as though I've missed out any assets today, please feel free to throw them down in the comments below. And make sure to include the level of the asset and the DLC that it comes with alongside its zoning size so other people can take advantage as well. Yeah, but I think what we'll do is just to round out something of an outro attached for today's episode is I will fly through uh, my mock downtown skyline over here and uh, just refine it with a couple of these repeated designs that we've covered today and uh, just see how much of a difference they make. Uh, but either way, I hope you enjoyed it um, and that it was kind of a weird format to present this one. Uh, the repeated assets I've been trying to work out for a while. Uh, but either way, I hope it was useful. And uh, that you guys are still enjoying our modular detailing take on things. Uh, but otherwise, I will shut up and leave it there. Uh, hang around for the rest of the outro tab if you want to see uh, some of these repeated patterns within kind of a, an actual downtown setting, if you like. Uh, just so you can see the impact they have. Uh, but otherwise, I want to thank you all so much for watching. And as always, enjoy the rest of your day.